We're going to be talking now about Elon Musk's latest venture called Neuralink Corp. Its aim, linking brains to computers by using implants. The company says by doing so, it can treat neuro diseases. And one day, these tiny little electrodes will be powerful enough to maybe upload uh, memories and ideas in our brain. How does that work? Well, the idea seems to be to build a seamless symbiotic uh, mesh of electrodes that can be implanted in our brains. Now, as time passes, this elect these electrodes or this network will uh, then interact with our own neural network. And through the combination of the two, we'll be able to augment our powers of cognition, we'll be able to have more memory, and in general, we'll be able to communicate in a much better way. So this is, it is the symbiotic relationship that seems to be the main objective of uh, this company. And now, uh, Elon Musk actually uh, announced this launch in, in a tweet, in a tweet in which he says he worries about the quote-unquote existential threat AI is posing to humans. What does that mean? If we don't merge with mach machines, we're going to go extinct? Well, who knows? Perhaps in the distant future, this could become a reality, and we might need to keep ourselves up to the rapid progress that artificial intelligence machines will be making. But as of now, uh, there's not such danger uh, if you talk about uh, the present. But artificial intelligence, it is slowly entering many spheres of our life. For example, uh, in Internet of Things, for in connected objects that we might end up using on a day-to-day -day basis in our homes, there's artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence plays a role in the way we decide to watch videos, for example, on YouTube or even in social networks, there's artificial intelligence. There's also artificial intelligence in self-driving cars. So it is coming in, slowly right. coming into our lives. So maybe it's a way of keeping up with artificial, because as you see, AI has many advantages, you know, tremendous computing power, massive storage. So in order to compete with it, maybe we'll have to mimic artificial intelligence. You know, artificial intelligence is a set of techniques that mimics human intelligence. Right. So maybe in the future, it could be the other way around. We'll have to see with that. But tell us more about other companies in the same sector that are up and running right now. Yeah, there are many startups that are using these techniques of the brain-computer interface, and one of them is the Boston-based Neurable, which is using uh, the you know EEG electroencephalography, uh, which basically detects the electrical activity in the brain. That's so, what doctors use. Exactly. Right. So what they're doing is they're interpreting some of these signals, and they have developed some technologies which enable them to have a hands-free uh, control for example, when you're using virtual reality or in augmented reality or in virtual reality, you have to choose from the menu or choose from the options. So that is the first stage that uh, uh, Neurable is uh, targeting now. And there's another company called Halo Neuroscience, which has uh, developed a headset, uh, which essentially it stimulates the, the motor cortex part of the brain. Uh, by using a special foam. And because of this stimulation, apparently the company claims that there's a better uh, optimization of uh, the uh, brain and the muscles. So it, it leads to better training and, I don't know, for athletes uh, especially.